I went to my dentist yesterday. You know what a dentist is? It's like a bandit in a white coat. So I was a bit disappointed in spending all my money there. And then I was even more disappointed when I was coming back because the check engine light was on, on the dashboard. Never seen it for two years. So in this video, I thought, let's do a comparison between OBD2 readers. Because this could be interesting because I've got three of them, three different types. And we can see what the codes are coming out and see if they all match together. Technically, they should. But let's see which one's better than the other. So I'm going to get the gear out and I'm going to put the camera on the stand. Well, first tester off the line is just a generic tester, Innova uh, 3160. Uh, I've got the ignition on, but I haven't switched the machine on yet. So we're going to, I've never tested this before, so we're going to check it and see what it says. Because this is, obviously some Land Rover machines are dedicated, so we're going to see what sort of code it's putting out. So we're going to press, turn the ignition on and press this link button. It is a little bit slow, but they all are a little bit. Probably, probably cold like the car. All right, so it's linking up. So it's showing P0150 O2 circuit, bank 2, sensor 1. So I'm going to put the iron over here. P zero one five zero. How could I get that wrong? So it's it's showing up in this top corner. There's actually three faults. So we're going to go down the circuit and see what the second. Oh, you see this is the problem with this thing. Oh, it's always rebooting. So we have to go through it again. We have to wait. So. We're going to go down. Number two, fault number two is P0300. So that's P0300. And oh, look, you see, this is this is the this is an annoying thing. It keeps rebooting, so we never get a chance to do this. So let's have a let's wait and go through it again. Right. So one. So that's we've got that one, and then we've got P. P0307 and it says cylinder 7 misfire detected. Alright, so I'm not going to clear the codes, I'm just going to simply take that out and we'll leave the codes in for a while and I'm, I'm going to put up the next machine. The next one up is the Britpart Lynx diagnostic interface. This goes between your laptop and your OBD port and you just simply start it up and I'll show you the process how it works now I know what you're going to say it's brick part it's in a blue box it's never going to work actually this is made by Omitech I think it's Omitech or Omnitech and they used to make the Land Rover uh, equipment so you're going to click start it's connecting Right, so now we choose our vehicle, we want the Discovery 2. This uh, laptop's a tough book. We need a tough book in this shop because it's always fallen on the floor. It does it remarkably well, so I'm not showing off by having a touch screen. Um, that's the one we want. Turn the ignition on, OK. Starts communications. You can see there it's, it's, it's talking away to it, so there's a link. Uh, it's telling us now it's telling us the hardware number. Oh, it's telling us a disco two what it is, it's North American spec. So now it's got communication. So now we're going to look at the fault codes. And then we'll read the fault codes. But in this instance it'll tell us maybe tell us something a little bit different. So that's really unusual because it's saying O2 pre catalyst bank two signal missing, fault not present and intermittent. Now this is really important, this is really strange. And this is why sometimes when you get code readers, I mean, it doesn't really tell you anything. You see the fault code is 1862 and 56. So it's saying uh, misfire detection, cylinder seven, emission relevant, maximum value exceeded, fault not present and static. 
so a same with this second one. Misfire detected, multiple cylinders, emission re relevant, maximum value exceeded, fault not present, and static. So what does that mean? The ECU in these, uh, this Bosch ECU will count every time every cylinder fires up. And it's, um, it's very clever. But you, you, and so it treats each cylinder as a separate engine, this engine management system. So again, it's very clever. So it can diagnose things. But sometimes it needs a certain amount of faults before it will flash up an actual error code. So this is a great example to show you. This is giving us more detail than just that generic reader. But it's still not say, it's not saying it's uh, intermittent. Now this could be because it's been so wet recently. As you can see, there's just snow everywhere. I've cleared off as much as I can. So the next one we're going to... I'm still not going to clear it off, but we'll need the laptop again. And the next one we're going to check is the black box fault mate. This is the fault mate MSV2 Extreme. That means it will act as a standalone unit, so you don't really need a laptop. So what I'm going to do, though, I've, I've linked it in. This actually links in by a serial cable, and the uh, links one was a USB. So let's start up the black box one. And we're going to select, if we look at over here, select by vehicle, uh, Land Rover, uh, Discovery 2, um, or Petrol Engine Management System, uh, Fault Codes. Read fault. So now it says it's connecting with the server, with the Motoronic. You can see they're both talking about the same. And this is why I never use this. It always says there's a communication problem, communication problem. It is very, very annoying. So let's unplug the. Uh, let's unplug this. Well, I have got the correct lead on there, so I'm going to start again. This is a few years old, but if I've used it for five or six hours in total, that's it. I've sent it back to uh, Cyprus once <clears throat> to get repaired, used it for a few weeks and it went faulty again. The cost of sending it backwards and forwards to Cyprus is a fortune. So now it's not really worth it and that's why I bought the links. See? Nothing. You can spend all day. So is the problem the port? Is the problem the wiring? We can't be, can it? Because we've had two machines on and they clicked in straight away. So this is not a very good diagnostic machine but and I'll say a big but when they do work they work extremely well because they go very deep into fault finding and diagnostics um, it's just that like I say for me to send this back to Cyprus by DHL which they recommend is about 150 odd dollars it's absolutely outrageous even though for them to send it back <laughs> like some like 40 dollars um, and the repairs last pretty cheap. It was only like, I don't know, $15. But now it's outstripped its value. And another thing I don't like about these is you have to... Well, the first thing I did like about these was the... You could buy different modules. So, for example, if you wanted the motor, motoronic for, uh, system for this engine management system, you could just buy that package. Or if you wanted the ABS, you could just buy that package. Which was very good, because it kept your budget down. However... Um, they're tied to this machine, so if you get another machine, um, you have to send this one back to them, and they will then reprogram it with your old system. Not very good. The, the um, Britpart one, on the other hand, 
that we used, that there, that actually has every vehicle in there up until the fairly recent Range Rovers. And it's got everything in there that a general mechanic needs. The only thing it hasn't got is uh, key programming. That's a, it's something I don't really do. But for diagnostics, I can put a LR3 on there. I can put a Range Rover. I can, I can put, you know, the old style Range Rover. They're all on there. But for this one, I have to buy the individual packages. Or I can buy a package for... Uh, a car that's been unlocked, if you see what I mean. Usually they lock them by the VIN number. Uh, I don't know. Good machine when it's working, but like I said, that's a typical example. Um, not working. And if there's any electronic people out there who could get it working, let me know, because uh, I'm not sending it back to Cyprus again, that's for sure. So again, we've tried it twice. Uh, didn't work. Just let's, just let's out of uh, curiosity see if it'll work. While well, we're at it, I like doing these videos live because you see the same problems as I do. Let's disconnect this. Let's disconnect this. This is, does the same thing as rebooting it. And we'll go through its different features. So we'll just let that, those capacitors die down a little while. And then we'll clip it back up again. And we're going to go and see if we can use this as a standalone. Maybe it's my cable. I don't know. You getting all this? The waiting user input. So we'll just click start getting the vehicle list. So we want the phone to stop ringing. Sorry about that. Customers. Anyway. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we were looking for a, a Range Rover on the uh, a Disco 2. So we keep going down the list. There's Discovery 2. So we turn it up until that little dot lines up with Discovery 2. Click the Enter. We want to come down to more, Motronic System. Click that. Read Codes. Now this could be interesting. Let's see what it says. Not responding. I'll let you make a decision. I'll let you see what you think. But <clears throat> I don't know. What can you do? So but you could imagine I'm disappointed in this because I spent an awful lot of money on it. And this is why mechanics, you know, that we, we charge, we, we have to charge for all these expensive tools. And if they're no good, well... It's got a drawer full of expensive bits doing nothing. So I'm going to put the, the, uh, Lynx, mach uh, the Lynx machine back on, the one that works. I'm going to clear the cords. And most importantly, I'm going to wait until that light comes on again. Because sometimes when you reset cords, that's all they actually need. Just to reset to put the light out. Um, I could have splashed some water on a HT lead, for example. And it's putting all sorts of different cords out. But there could be something serious which I doubt. But anyway, we'll, we'll, diagnostics is a bit hit and miss. Um, you know, it's, it's not, sometimes codes are just temporary. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes codes are temporary. So we clear them off, take the car, take it for a drive, and see if it comes on again with the same code. So always make note of the codes. That's important. Before I go, I forgot something again. These aren't just for engines and things like this. They'll do an awful lot of problems. But I just thought I'd show you how we clear the codes off. So we click the erase button. Are you sure? Yes. Turn the ignition off. This is going through it, starting up again, and stopping, and starting. Turn the ignition on. Okay. 
Okay. Diagnostic trouble codes have been cleared. Okay. Just to be sure, we'll do a search again. No faults found. So that's good. We can also check uh, live data by selecting um, items on here. We can do um, engine speed, battery voltage. We can do a whole host individual tests. Uh, really good machine. Um, very practical. Very practical piece of kit. A little bit expensive, but as you, as you can see, you plug it in and it works. That's what you want. You don't want to be messing about cleaning connections which I was with the other one. All right, so back to the thing again. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like this. And if you've got a question, even if it's on diagnostics, I should be able to help. Um, just let me know. All right, take care now.